We have all made mistakes in the Amazon game and one of them is selling bad products. In this video, I will share with you my bad products and what you can do if you have these kind of products in your inventory. Stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now for four years. Right now, I'm on a mission to do one million pounds by the end of 2021. And what I'll do is I'll drop a link to a video that I created up there about my entire journey where I talk about what I'm gonna do and also I share my profits on that journey. So check it out. Hopefully it will help you in your business as well. Now, enough about me. What are we gonna go through today? Well, first things first, number one, I'm gonna talk about what makes a product bad. Number two, I'm gonna talk about how to check if a product is bad. Number three, I will share what were my worst products. Number four, what to do when you have bad products. And then finally, number five, how to avoid bad products. Let's jump into it now. Okay, first things first, number one, what makes a bad product? Now, there are many reasons why a product can be considered bad. One reason is that a product can have poor profit. Poor or low profit products will decrease the opportunity to grow your profits and that's why there are many sourcing tools to check if a product is profitable to sell. The second reason why a product can be considered bad is because it can lead to things called IP complaints. Now IP complaints are when a specific brand files a complaint through Amazon about you because you are selling their products without their permission, intellectual property. Now having an IP complaint can be really stressful and nearly impossible to resolve which with enough of them will really affect your Amazon selling account health. Now again, there are many tools you can use to check if a product's brand has a history of issuing IP complaints. What I'll do is I'll share a link down below to the Fast Track FBA brand checker, whereby we list all those brands that have a history of issuing IP complaints. So check that out, that's gonna really help you. Now, the third reason can be when your product has what's known as a high return rate. The return rate is the percentage of units sold which are then returned by the customer due to various reasons. Now, the average return rate on Amazon ranges anywhere between five and 15%, but return rate for some categories such as consumer electronics, clothing, and even fine jewelry can shoot as high as 40%. Note, every time a customer requests a return, you are paying for it. So the more returns you have, the less profits you are gonna make. Just remember that. Now, if you are interested in how to manage customer returns, what to do with customer returns, check out a link to a video I created up here, which just explains it in more detail and gives you step-by-step -step how to handle that process. That video is really gonna help you out in your business. Now, the fourth reason why a product can be bad is when it contains what's known as dangerous ingredients. Amazon is very strict in enforcing this. Most of the time, they will email you a notice about the dangerous ingredients of the ASIN you are selling once they discover it. One example I had of this, which I've sold in the past, is a product which contained what's known as shark cartilage. Not so much dangerous, but definitely banned. Now to avoid this, use a sourcing tool such as FBA Multi-Tool. It's gonna to let you know if an ASIN is considered hazardous, that you can't sell through the FBA program. Now, what should you do if you've already received a notice from Amazon like me with that Sharp product previously? Well, what you can do is remove that ASIN from your inventory, or you can provide documentation from your supplier or manufacturer that clears the ASIN from being what's known as considered dangerous or having dangerous ingredients. Now, the last reason for a bad product is having what's known as a high FBA fee. Having high FBA fees are gonna decrease your profits and lead to losses within your business. Always remember to check the product's measurements when you're sourcing. It's an easy thing to forget. What I'm gonna say is that a product may appear small on the screen, but in reality, it could be huge. Now, maybe even to the point that the FBA fee is gonna wipe out any profit and cause you to have a loss. Previously in my own business, I had bought what's known as a football goalpost, which I thought was pretty small and I could ship it into my prep center. But you know what? I got a phone call and a picture from my prep center telling me that they have a six foot high goalpost in their warehouse right now. And what did they want me to do with it? Well, I actually did ship it into Amazon and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't make any money from that at all. So check those FDA fees. Now this leads me nicely onto number two, how to check if a product is bad. 
Now it's easy to know if you have a bad product when you receive what's known as the dreaded IP complaint, or when Amazon emails you to say you have high return rate. But if you want to check if you have a bad product due to poor profit or high FBA fees, what you can do first is to check and analyze your sales records when your products are being sold. Now this can be done in your profit software. For example, in my business, we use Seller Toolkit. Now the second is to check the ASIN information in your profit software to see if it was sold according to your deal criteria. Now, for example, a lot of sellers will be using the three pound profit 30% ROI as their deal criteria. Now, what you're gonna do is if one of those products wasn't sold based on that deal criteria, i.e. it's below, you can check the reasons why. One thing would be to check the Amazon fees you paid for it, and then also to look into the different angles as to why you made a lower than expected profit. Top tip, make a list of those bad ASINs so that you can avoid them again, and also when sourcing. And I'd also recommend that you record the reasons why that ASIN is bad, and then you can use it as a precaution when sourcing other similar ASINs, i.e. high FBA fees, like my girl post previously, or even some people thought they don't know is the that on the fees, that's another problem. Quick question for you guys, how do you know if you've got a bad product or not? Let me know in the comments down below. What checks are you doing that I can learn from as well? Let me know what checks you're doing in the comments down below. Okay, chapter three, what were my bad products that I sold? Now look, even long-time Amazon sellers like me encounter bad products. And I'm gonna share with you some of the bad products that I've sold during my years of selling on Amazon. So number one, my first bad product was these gray pants and I'll drop a picture around here of them. Now we purchased this ASIN knowing that the listing had great sales from looking at the data and using our tools. But as we started to sell it on Amazon, it took a really long time before we started to see any sales at all, even though we were on the buy box. Now what we discovered was, was that this listing has more than one color and it was what's known as a variety. And it was the varieties which had better sales performance than, you know what, my gray colored pants. Now, the big problem we had here was that these pants were just not selling at all. Why? We got the wrong variety of the pants. And it got so bad to the point that after one year, we had to tell Amazon to basically destroy them. That was after one year being in Amazon warehouses. So top tip for you guys, be careful with listings that have variations. Do your research. Now, the second bad product that I sold was this bag, and I'll drop it around here from Smiggle. Now we purchased that last year and I thought this product was gonna be good, but upon sending it into Amazon and getting it selling, the number of sellers who joined the listing just increased and increased to the point that I was forced to sell it at a small loss. Top tip from you guys, what can you learn from this? Well, be careful with suppliers that everyone else sources from. You are gonna see that increase in competition. Now my third product is this white shelf insert. Now at first it had good sales and we were really happy with it. But as the weeks passed, more and more sellers joined the listing. And in addition to that, Amazon stopped showing its sales rank. Now what happened was we thought we were going to hold on and the price would recover. Maybe we could take a smaller or lesser profit. What actually happened, that price continued to go down and down and down due to too much competition. Now top tip from me here, was I should have reduced that price quickly and just got the product sold out, but I didn't. I was hoping it would recover and it actually got worse. So sometimes you need to just learn to cut your losses, get out of the product while you can. Now, my fourth bad product is this antioxidant serum. It had good sales at first, but do you know what happened? Amazon entered the listing and as we all know, we can't compete against Amazon. Now, what makes this worse was that Amazon's price was so low and they had so much stock at the time that I had no choice but to sell it as low as Amazon. And what happened as a result, it made a loss. So top tip for you guys, when you're doing your deal analysis, use those keeper charts to check the previous selling price of Amazon and ask yourself the question, if I had to sell it at the price Amazon's done, am I happy to do that? Just have an understanding, use the keeper charts. It's really gonna help you out in case Amazon, and should we say be prepared, in case Amazon re-enters that listing, like me in my situation. 
Now, if you are worried about finding leads, finding deals to sell on Amazon, and hey, maybe you want to avoid listings with Amazon on them, look no further than Fast Track FBA Leads. This is a service I created whereby we have a team of VA sourcing seven days a week for the UK and USA marketplaces. What do we do? We put all the deals we find onto our web portal and you can filter them to find the right deals for you, such as removing Amazon from the listings. Once you've found the deals that meet your criteria, what you can do is simply unlock them, go to the supplier, buy the products, and ship them into Amazon, resell, make profits. If you want to see more, I'll drop a link down below to Fast Track FBA Leads. Check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. That leads me nicely on to number four, what to do when you have bad products. Now, if you have a bad product that started with an IP complaint, you need to fix it by complying with what they say in the complaint and talking with the brand owner through emails. Now, if you want to know more about IP complaints, how to handle them and what to do, I'll, what I'll do is I'll drop a link to a video up here I created earlier, which is all about IP complaints and what you need to do step-by-step step to resolve them and to get your account back in health. So check that out, it's gonna help you out. Now, if you have a bad product because of poor sales through too much competition, you can use what's known as a repricer to win the buy box from the competition. Now, if a repricer doesn't fix a the problem, there might be no other option than to sell it at either a very low price and even to take a loss like I've done in the past. Now, like me, if you receive an email from Amazon that your product has dangerous ingredients or it's now a hazmat product, you're gonna need to remove it from Amazon's warehouses by using the remove inventory process from within your Seller Central account. Now, this leads me nicely onto number five, how to avoid bad products. Always remember that you need to be meticulous when sourcing those products online. Now, let me share with you some of the ways to avoid bad products when sourcing. Number one, first things you can do is to use sourcing tools when looking for products online. Based on my experience, this can be the best way to avoid products that are hazmat, dangerous ingredients, or considered private label products. In my business, we use FBA Multi-Tool and Keeper to do the analysis to see if we are eligible to sell a product and if we can make a profit from it and to check the FBA fees. Number two is to use an IP checker to make sure that you will not encounter any known IP complaints from the products that you're about to sell. Again, IP complaints can be very, very difficult to fix and very stressful. Just remember, if you are wanting to use an IP checker, do check out the Fast Track FBA brand checker. I will drop a link down below. It's a free brand checker where we list all the brands that we know cause ID complaints. Check that out. Lastly, that leads me on to number three, check the customer reviews. By doing this, you can see if a product has good impressions from the customer or not. Sometimes you can use this to check if you are likely to have a high number of returns or customer returns and when bad reviews are more frequent than good reviews. Now, what I will say is we've all made mistakes in our journey and that this is just normal when sourcing for products online. Again, you can avoid these if you use sourcing tools and I will leave two videos around here. First is my guide on how to use FBA Multi-Tool and the second video is my Keeper Deal Analysis video, which is gonna help you sourcing safer, faster and more effectively. But what I will say is hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you have, give me a big thumbs up and hit that like button. And hey, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below. But for me, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.